Welcome to Easy Microbiology. Welcome, everyone. Today, we will be discussing Francisella tularensis, highly infectious gram-negative bacterium that can cause the zoonotic disease known as tularemia. We'll look at the bacteria's morphology, cultural characteristics, biochemical characteristics, host range, virulence factors, and mechanisms of antibiotic resistance. Let's get started. Francisella tularensis is a type of bacteria that can cause a disease called tularemia. This bacterium is highly infectious and can be spread through contact with infected animals, contaminated water or soil, or through insect bites. Tularemia can cause symptoms such as fever, headache, muscle aches, and swollen lymph nodes. In severe cases, it can lead to pneumonia or other serious complications. Because of its high pathogenicity and potential use as a bioweapon, it is important to take precautions to avoid exposure and seek medical attention if you suspect you have been infected. Francisella tularensis is commonly found in animals such as rabbits, rodents, and ticks, and can also persist in the environment, including water, soil, and vegetation. This makes it important to take precautions when handling animals or spending time in areas where the bacterium may be present. It is also important to properly dispose of animal carcasses and avoid drinking untreated water from potentially contaminated sources. Francisella tularensis is a small, non-modal, pleomorphic bacterium that appears as tiny, cocobacillary shaped cells. It can be difficult to visualize under a light microscope, which can make it challenging to diagnose. Specialized laboratory tests may be necessary to accurately identify the bacterium. F. Tularensis is an organism that requires an enriched environment to grow and thrive. It has specialized growth media, such as cysteine heart agar or modified Thayer Martin agar. This is important for developing effective treatments and preventative measures for this infection. F. Tularensis is a bacterium that causes tularemia, a potentially fatal disease. Its biochemical attributes make it hard to detect and treat since it is oxidase negative, does not produce hydrogen sulfide and does not ferment carbohydrates, which decreases its metabolic activity. Such metabolic inactivity must be taken into account when creating a drug to prevent or address this infection. F. Tularensis is an important pathogen which can infect several mammals, birds, and arthropods, but mainly rabbits and rodents are reservoirs of infection for human beings. It is imperative to create effective drugs to protect against and treat F. Tularensis infection. F. Tularensis is a bacteria that can be deadly, which produces various virulence factors to aid its pathogenesis. These factors include lipopolysaccharide, capsule, and several proteins, and enable the bacteria to survive and cause tissue damage in its host. With advancements in treatment, we could possibly stop or reduce the degree of infection. Despite its high infectivity, Francisella tularensis has limited mechanisms of antibiotic resistance. Mutations or acquisition of resistant genes may cause resistance to certain antibiotics such as beta-lactams and aminoglycosides, but effective medications to prevent and treat this infection are still attainable. This slide provides us with an overview of the epidemiology of tularemia. Tularemia is a disease caused by gram-negative bacteria, Francisella tularensis. It is widespread in many parts of the world, causing infection in humans and animals alike. The disease can be spread by contact with infected animals, bites from arthropod vectors, inhalation of contaminated aerosol, or ingestion of contaminated food or water. F. Tularensis is a highly infectious disease that can enter the body through various routes. Once inside, it primarily infects immune cells, such as macrophages, to enable its replication and systemic spread, leading to severe systemic illness. Immune responses to F. tularensis infection are complex. Innate and adaptive immunity both play an important role in modulating the outcome of the infection. Innate immune responses, such as the production of inflammatory cytokines and nitric oxide, are initiated immediately upon infection and they work to limit bacterial replication and spread. The adaptive immune system, which is composed of B and T cells, also plays an important role in controlling infection. In particular, CD4 plus T cells are specifically required to protect against tularemia. In vitro studies show that these cells produce pro-inflammatory cytokines that are important for controlling bacterial replication and spread. In addition, antibody-mediated immunity is also important for controlling infection. Antibodies produced by B-cells can help to eliminate F. tularensis from the body. 
Diagnosis of tularemia is an important element in preventing and treating infection. Laboratory diagnosis requires the collection of appropriate patient specimens, such as blood, tissue or aspirates, and testing them with culture, PCR or serological methods. Specialized biosafety measures must be taken due to the highly infectious nature of Francisella tularensis. Preventing tularemia involves avoiding contact with infected animals, handling potentially contaminated materials with safety measures, and wearing the right attire and using repellents to ward off arthropod bites. Unfortunately, there is presently no commercial vaccine for humans, although certain vaccines are utilized in high-risk working environments. Prompt antibiotic therapy is crucial for treating tularemia, which is caused by Francisella tularensis. Drugs such as streptomycin, gentamicin, doxycycline, or ciprofloxacin are commonly used for the treatment of F. tularensis infections. It is important to seek medical attention if you suspect you have been infected with tularemia, as early treatment can improve outcomes and reduce the risk of complications. The control and management of tularemia is essential to reduce its impact on public health. Our research has shown the importance of understanding the characteristics, epidemiology, pathogenesis, diagnosis, prevention and treatment of Francisella tularensis in order to effectively manage and control this form of disease. We thank you for taking the time to listen to our findings and for your continued support in the development of life-saving medications and treatments.